Jesus, in the book of Luke, he make a question. When the Son of Man come, perhaps we'll find faith upon the earth. The Bible says that anything that is not by faith, it is sin. So Bible says faith is the firm foundation of the things that we wait, but the proof of the things that we don't see. So the last year, the theme was holding the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience. So in the first day of the year of 2022, the Lord has called our attention so that during the whole year we can keep the mystery of the faith because the faith is a mystery and keep where? And he points the destiny and where and why should be kept in a conscience, pure conscience. And what it is a pure conscience? It's a conscience washed and redeemed by the power of the blood of Jesus because it's the only thing that can purify us. But the blood of Jesus is the only thing that can make us holy before God. So when we have this precious weapon, which is the power of the blood of Jesus in our lives, so the faith will be preserved in our hearts. So keeping, holding the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience. So now, 2023, the Lord keep talking to us about faith. But now, it's not we that are going to keep the faith. And now the faith will, will be keeping, keeping, keep us safe. Kept safe in our faith. And now in 2023, in, in reward. Do, do, do one. We're kept by the power of God. So what is this letter is addressed? The Bible says in the first verse, Paul, or Peter, apostle of Jesus Christ, in, in several cities, Gal Galatia, Pontus, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. So when we come a little back to the book of Acts, and we see all these foreigners being listed there. So we mention a bunch of men that inhabited in the Mesopotamia and Judea and Pontus and Asia. So the same man that inhabited in Jerusalem and this letter was written about 30 years after. So this letter was written to the same man that participated in the Pentecost during the moment that the, the Spirit was poured out where they saw tongues being shared they have a great experience with the Lord. Now they are foreigners. And they were dispersed. They were living in other countries and cities. But the letter was directed to them, addressed to them. Why? Because they had an experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They had an experience of salvation, transformation, because the day that the Holy Spirit was poured out, Peter talks about that. Repent yourself and convert yourselves. It was the day that they had an experience. 
So they flew to a different places. They they ran to a different places, and they understand that the plan of God is still upon them. So the the same man that was during the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the Pentecostes, he was elected according to the conscience of God the Father in conscience for the aspect the, for the blood of Jesus. So this man that lived this experience, they were elected. And what is election? Election is a choice. You can elect God, yes or not. You have the free will. The Lord is my my owner, my pastor, my master. So God also can choose. And here the Lord has chosen the, the ones that was baptized in the Holy Spirit and was preserved. And the Bible talks about preservation. Preserved in Jesus Christ. And the word says it was through the faith. Why through the faith? Because without faith it's impossible to please God. So when we have faith, we please God. And if we do not have peace, we unplease God. And when we have faith, we receive a power. Did you know that, my brother, my sister, that faith is a power? It's written in the, the, the Gospel of John. And gave them the power to be son of God for the ones that believe in his name. So the faith is a power that allows you to be son of God. And when you turn yourself son of God, you receive from his side a inheritance. You are part of a kingdom. That's why the Bible says that they were like foreigners. They're not citizens of that cities or that counties or uh, states, several countries being mentioned. Now this letter is addressed to the citizens of heaven. Like the song that we sing, we are foreigners here. That's why they were foreign, uh, foreigners, because that country was not from here. My country, I aspire by you. So this letter was addressed to those men and women that preserve their faith in their hearts. Talks about the, the foreigners that belong to the celestial country called by the God the Father, called by Jesus Christ. And it talks about the the spread of the blood, the power of the blood. So most of the things are purified by blood. So when an animal was killed in sacrifice, that blood was used to sprinkle, to cause the sanctification. So the blood of Jesus Christ in the Calvary on the cross, he works like that for yours, for mine, for our sins. So we can be the people that will be inherit the, the heaven. So according to the faith, you were kept safe in the virtue of God. Who is the virtue of God? The Holy Spirit. And you receive the virtue of the Holy Spirit. So the ones that has the Holy Spirit and has preserved the project of God in their lives, they are being kept safe. For what? For who? And for what moment? For when? For this moment that we are living. Kept and preserved 
not to suffer the damage that the world without Christ will suffer, not to go through the judgment that the world will pass through. So God is teaching us something valuable. Man and woman that understand the value of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the sprinkle of the blood at the cross, and the cross at Calvary, soon to be revealed. So the Lord is talking about this prophetic moment that we are living. It's a moment that the Lord is revealing Himself, where the signs are fulfilling in our hearts. And the moment of soon is approaching. Moment in which the bride and the, the, the broom, the bride's broom, saying, Come. And any moment in a blink of an eye, we and all the foreigners will be taken to that celestial country. But every aspect of this is by faith. Believe in Jesus and you'll be saved. And if there's no faith, there's no salvation, no redemption of sin, no eternal kingdom, no eternity. So this faith generates transforms the one that is in Christ is a new creature everything has been turned new so this is the moment this is what we expect for this new year of 2023 where the people of God and the, pe the people of God will be kept safe and will be preserved by the virtue or the blessing of the Holy Spirit through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, to the prophecies, the manifestations of the Holy Spirit within His people. Who will be kept safe for salvation. This is the greatest promise that God has made to the man. And the promise of salvation and the eternal life is the greatest. Through Jesus Christ, we can be sons of God, children of God, the eternal life. To be revealed in this moment of soon is the time that we are living on. It's the moment of soon. In the moment, like a lightning, the, the church will be departing. And you that are with us tonight, you that came to the house of the Lord, as the song, you still have time. So if you believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior, we still have time to have your life preserved, to receive the virtue of the Holy Spirit. Still have time to live in this new heaven and new earth you still have time to be transformed by the Son of God. It's still time. This is a decision that every and each one has to make. It's particular. And this prophetic moment, to keep the faith that is needed. If I keep my faith as I kept in 2022, in this new year of 2023, the faith will keep me and will deliver me. So no plague will come to your tent because two angels will give order to keep you safe from evil. Let's sing a song.
Amen. I invite the church to stand. One word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, we praise you and we adore you as for the opportunities at our hands. We understand and we give thanks for this project, for the operation of your Holy Spirit and for the word that is being preached and is speaking to our hearts and for the promise to be kept safe. And we understand that you continuously doing that during this new year for the care, for the preservation in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, receive our praise, our adoration as an offering at your nostrils. So we ask you blessings for the seminar next week, for the commute, give deliverances and experiences so your grace can be manifesting upon your servants, your children, so we can receive a great blessing during this moment. We supplicate and praise in you in advance as for until now you have blessed us. And you have manifested your grace in your mercy. In the name of Jesus. In your name we say that the grace of our Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, good Father, and the tender consolation of the Holy Spirit can be with the people of God now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. I'd like to an announce to the church that Wednesday we're going to have a latest meeting through Zoom. Thursday we're going to have our prayer service but during next weekend there will be no activity whatsoever in the church. We're going to be traveling to the seminar close to Orlando in the camping hotel and if you're going in your car watch and pray. Make prayers and be prudent because the Lord is showing some in uh, attacks that are being planned by the enemy. So, if you using your own car, make sure you pray and watch. the The list for the the bus is ready, and the the bus will leave si 6 a.m. the The bus will be leaving. So, try to come 5:30, 5:40, because 6 a.m. The bus will be leaving because they have to arrive on time to have a meal and be prepared for the first class. And another instruction is all the participating of the seminar, make sure you do the fasting starting tomorrow until the end of the seminar. So starting tomorrow. If you cannot do it from midnight to 9, you do 5 p.m. to after, like a service time. If you have a health condition, don't worry. You're okay to not do it. You are coming with us. Be welcome here. We are very happy with your presence here. And we are preaching the word of God about this.